Hello, welcome to section three, triggers and bindings. In our last section, we learned about the different languages we can use in our Azure Function app. In this section, we will discover how Azure Functions integrate with different events and services through triggers and bindings. In this section, we're gonna take a look at basic triggers and how to bind inputs and outputs, storage triggers, event-based triggering, and some advanced binding tricks. Now we move on to the first video of this section. This one introduces triggers and bindings. It's important to grasp the concept of how you can trigger a function from an event and bind your input or output to another Azure service. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what a trigger is, what bindings are, types of triggers and bindings, and finally, how you can manage your Azure Functions triggers and bindings. Let's start by defining a trigger. A trigger defines how a function is invoked. A function must have exactly one trigger. Triggers have associated data, which is usually the payload that triggered the function. So then what is a binding? Input and output bindings provide a declarative way to connect to data from within your code. Similar to triggers, you specify connection strings and other properties in your function configuration. Bindings are optional, and a function can have multiple input and output bindings. For this section, we'd like to create a brand new function app in order to keep our functions organized. So go up to the top left and click on new. And we could of course just type function app here, or if you wanna to browse to it, let's click on compute. And then scroll down until you see function app. All right, for the app name, I'm just gonna say section three, the first initial last name, and then a resource group, we'll call it rg-section3 choose the location close to me, and then I'm gonna come up with a storage name that's a little easier to see. There we go. I'll click Create. Okay, about 30 seconds later, it should be created. You can find it by going to your All Resources, and then just choosing the function app that we created earlier, Section 3 Polliver. Of course, your name will be in the name of your function app. All right, we're now in our function app. They've changed the look and feel a little bit, but it looks pretty similar to our previous video, so you shouldn't get too lost. In order to create a new function, click over here to the right on the blue plus, and here we have a familiar looking screen. So let's just do a C sharp, and then we're gonna just say, create your own custom function here. And I'm actually gonna choose C sharp in this drop down, And then we're just gonna do a manual trigger. The default name is fine, click create. And here we have a function that is manually triggered. So looking at the triggers in bindings is pretty easy. You just go to the integrate tab for your function and let's break this down a little bit. So your triggers are defined here. You only get one trigger and there has to be a trigger. In this case, we are using an input trigger. Then you have other inputs that you can draw upon into your function. And then we have an output. By looking at this, we can see there's only one input trigger and then there are no inputs or output bindings these are the bindings this is the trigger so if we wanted to change this to a different type of trigger it's simple you just click the delete button then click on new trigger here and you'll get a list of trigger types that you can use here so we have timers event hub queue storage blob storage external file manual azure service bus http this changes as time goes on so by the time you look at this video you might have some other choices here and that's a good thing that just shows how innovation happens in Azure. In this case, if I wanted to change it to say uh, HTTP trigger, I would just choose that and hit select. I'm fine with manual for now, so I'm going to, actually I'll cancel out. I do need a trigger here, so let's just do manual. Select that. For our bindings, for example, our inputs, let's save this first. For our inputs, you have a similar looking list. In this case, you may wanna manually trigger this function, but you might want to read from blob storage as an input. That's how you would select it. And you can now add it, it'll tell you a path. You have some parameters that are custom to this input. What if you wanted to also read from something different? Like, uh, let's, uh, here, let's save this first. All right, so what if we also wanted to read from DocumentDB? You can just click on new input and then choose Azure DocumentDB as an input to your function. And then by hitting select, then you get some, uh, some form fields for you to fill out in order to set this input up. And I'll cancel out of this. You also have different ways to output from the function. 
we actually have more output methods. Um, we have everything from event hub, service bus, HTTP responses, SendGrid, Twilio. You can see there's a lot of options. And again, as Azure innovates, as the Microsoft team keeps adding on to Azure functions, you're gonna see more choices here. Odds are today, if you watch this video, you might have more options here. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. So let's say you wanted to edit this file manually or these inputs and triggers manually, like keep this in source control. Like if you follow infrastructure as code, click on advanced editor and you'll see the configuration. And here we have an input manual trigger and we have an input here. It's a blob container and it's sitting in this path. Whether the function is disabled, that's all here. You can close out that editor and go to standard editor and you're back to the familiar integrate tab. But you can also see this file in the function navigator here, or this tab. If you click on view files, you'll notice function.json. This is the exact same file we are editing on the integrate tab in the advanced editor mode. So that's another way to get to it. If you like to keep it in this screen, you can just manage everything through here. As you change your inputs and your bindings and your triggers, you need to change your function signature. So in this case, we have an input and then this log file is passed in. On the integrate tab, if I change this to foo and save it, and I come back here, this file, this function will fail. You'll see missing trigger argument name foo, and that's easy to remedy, you just say foo. Save and run, and then, oh, I notice there's another typo, I'm gonna change input to foo, and then run again. And now it's it's working with this test value coming of course from our request body. Uh, we'll go into more details around this as you um, play around with triggers and bindings. I just wanted to show you a little bit in the Azure portal how this is all managed. So what did we just learn? Well, we learned what a trigger is and then we defined what bindings are. Then we talked a little bit about trigger and binding types. And then finally, we showed how you can manage your triggers and bindings for your Azure function.